Back in 2014, 8-bit nostalgia was at an all-time high. Mega Man 9 and 10, the virtual console, classic and indie titles being sold on every console as well as Steam. It brought about a return of simple pixel art and 2D platforming. And coming out at the tail end of this wave was 2014's Shovel Knight. This was the big indie title back then, shilled by journalists and gamers alike. Now, eight years after release, I finally got around to playing it, and I'm glad I did because this game is really good. Off the bat, Shovel Knight is exactly what it sounds. It's an old-school platformer where you play as a knight and use a shovel to bounce on enemies. Your main bosses are eight knights with names like Mole Knight, Propeller Knight, Plague Knight, and so on. However, unlike Mega Man, Shovel Knight is racked with guilt from failing to save his comrade, Shield Knight. After every few levels, is a scene of him uh, dreaming about failing to save her over and over again. It's tragic, and it got me rooting for the little guy more than I would have otherwise. So what makes this game so good, you may ask? Simple. The level design. Once it gets out of early game tutorial mode and the training wheels come off, you get challenges with enemies flying all over the place, varied and cool level gimmicks, and tough but fair platforming that really capitalizes on the mechanics. What really separates the wheat from the chaff with 2D platformers is the level design, and Shovel Knight knocks it out of the park in this regard. My favorite level in the game is Lost City. It's not only a cave level and a lava level, it's also a slime level. One moment you're dodging a trip through the fire, then you're riding on a giant beetle that'll bounce you high into the air, then you're jumping over lava pits, and then you're bouncing around on slime platforms, and the next moment there are little puzzles with slime balls that turn the lava pits into slime platforms that you can bounce on. Every level is like this. The gimmicks enhance the levels rather than the track because they allow you to keep the flow of movement and combat up. It's challenging, but it's definitely nowhere near as brutal or unforgiving as the classic Mega Man titles. Bosses in this game are also pretty good. The fights themselves are nice, and the little dialogues Shovel Knight has with them, along with the great animations and music, lends a lot of character to each fight. Of particular note is the boss rush, where the knights are all at a feast, and you drop down onto the table and interrupt them. Then they take turns fighting Shovel Knight while the others watch. I don't generally like boss rushes, but this one was surprisingly good. Each boss also has a unique battle theme based on his stage theme. Why does a Mega Man do this? It can't be understated how good the music in general is. For my when you boot it up all the way through to the credits, this game is a treat for the years. It's reminiscent of classic Mega Man, and that's probably the best compliment I can give to a chiptune soundtrack like this. My favorite songs included the Lich Graveyard, Lost City, and the Clock Tower, as well as the intro stage. It's It's not anything groundbreaking, but it's great. And that's how I describe the game itself. I can't particularly think of anything I disliked about Shovel Knight, and that's a testament to how polished it is. But it doesn't exactly innovate, or it's just really good. Donkey said it best. It's not a five-star restaurant. It's a buffet with all your favorite stuff on it. I give Shovel Knight a 7 out of 10. <laughs> <laughs> 